I've never believed in using tournament tackle for fishing. I just use ordinary fast taper rods and generally small multipliers. Given the choice, I'd much rather use a multiplier than a fixed spool. Not because it casts any less, but because I just like the overall smoothness. When you're buying a rod, do check the reel seat and the handle length. 28 to 32 inches is about right. The butt of your rod should be fairly stiff, not rigid, just a little bit of flex. And the middle section needs to be both springy and sensitive. In all, it adds up to medium fast or fast taper. Most of my rods are balanced to five ounce casting because any rod that will cast five ounces will also cast eight. The top of the rod must be fairly springy. If it's stiff at all, you won't control the pendulum. Plenty of action gives you a smoother cast. Weights I make myself. Plain leads, leads with spikes, for general fishing, much better than fixed leads. Choose nice, strong stainless steel wire, not galvanized because that rusts. And for casting, I sometimes put a, an old plastic ball on because it sl slows down the swing and the cast doesn't go so far, which makes it easier for winding in. My lead is a 50 pound braking strain for fishing and for casting. It's very, very important to use a good brand of monofilament with a high shock strength. Knots need to be carefully tied and well snugged down. Spit on them, because that helps. And protect the knot with either a split ring or just a little piece of rubber tube slipped over the knot and the tail of the lead. Tuning a reel is as simple or as complicated as you like to make it. Basically, I use brake block control. One small block. You don't need to have a block on both sides. Oil the reel, three in one, oil is very good. And just check that the mechanics are free from dust. When you screw the reel together again, make sure that the spool and frame are properly aligned. Otherwise you'll get bad casts and you'll wear out the reel. The leader knot comes onto one side of the, small, the spool because that way it won't cut your thumb. Use at least six turns around. Otherwise, you'll snap off. Side play needs adjusting so that the spool just moves back and forth a little bit. Now, setting yourself up for the cast, the first job is to set the leader drop about four feet. Put your feet in place and just relax. Swing everything out so that it lands in a straight line. Then pull the rod forward when you make the cast. And flick over with your arms. Just watch the weight till it hits the sea, then stop the reel. As of day one, learn to wind the line in smoothly. Spread it evenly across the spool. Don't let it build up at any point. If it builds up, the cast will backlash. And this is a very basic exercise, but it's extremely important. Learn it on an ABC process, starting with how you hold the reel. Wrap your thumb around it. Then push it out of gear. Now drop everything into line, rod tip low. And your elbow, your left elbow that is, quite high, so that it makes a straight line down the rod. Cradle the reel in your right hand. There's no need to hold it as if it's going to escape. Again, relax. Your feet, dig them into the shingle or the sand a bit, otherwise you're going to fall over. That's where you cast, high in the air, about 45 degrees, not out along the sea. And everything runs from that casting point back to the lead in a straight line. Now the cast moves forward as if you were throwing a spear, then flicks the rod over. 
It's a very important action. Check your drop. Put your feet into position. Reel out of gear. Lay the cast out. Check the aiming spot and cast. Now that looks easy, and it is easy, but it'll still throw 80 yards. Most of the power in your body is in your legs and across your shoulders. The weight of the body alone can add enormously to the power and distance of a cast. Learning to use your body weight is stage two. Put everything behind it. The more blubber and fat you've got, the further you'll cast. Also, think about safety at this point. Even a boat that far out can be hit by a lead. Line up exactly as before, but drop your weight onto your right leg. Move forward, transfer to your left leg as you make the cast. Doesn't look much, but it'll add enormously to your distance. You can think in terms of throwing 100 or 120 yards. Lengthen your drop a little, because that'll make the rod work more efficiently. But remember, cast high. Body rotation adds more power by lengthening the arc of the cast and also bringing more of your back muscles into play. Essentially the action is the same as before, the pull forward and the push and pull action. You can get real distance this way. A lot of casters can hit 160, 170 yards. Now don't lay it out by putting the lead down, then setting your body. It's inefficient. You'll sidearm the cast. No power, no body weight. Generally an overrun, never any distance. Although it looks a bit cumbersome, the cast is perfectly all right for fishing. Any kind of end rig will come off the beach neatly, even a grip lead. Straight off the beach, 100 yards out to sea. Now if you never learn to cast any better than that, you'll still be better than 99% of the fishermen. Practice is essential, but you don't need your fishing rod. Any old piece of wood, broomstick, doesn't matter. Set up the cast, just practice the action. You can do it at home, even do it indoors. The pendulum cast is only an extension of what we've been doing. Instead of laying out the sinker on the ground, you pick it up and swing it out, in towards you, then you make the cast.